Hey, good morning. This is viewer project number two, Jacob's weight base. Last week you saw me build a wooden mold case for it. This week we're gonna pour a rubber blanket into it. Stick around, it should be fun. One area of concern about this mold is leakage. And a simple way to stop leaks on just about any mold is with oil clay. Fillet it into the corner, mash it into the joint between the two pieces of wood. And that is all you have to do. I did all the corners the same way, as you can see. And uh, there's just not going to be any problems with leakage. Plywood often has these voids in it, and the rubber would leak in there and fill them up, and it would just uh, wind up wasting a lot of rubber. When I make a mold, I'm thinking ahead to any problems that might arise, anything that could go horribly wrong, anything, <laughs> anything that you know, might screw up. So one of the areas that I am concerned about is right here, these dams. These dams are just cardboard and they're just sticky waxed in place. So this is an area that I'm very concerned they might leak. I mixed up red rubber. This is not the pouring rubber. This is a brush on or layup rubber. It lays on there like peanut butter. <laughs> what this rubber that I'm putting on there is going to do is to make sure that this dam doesn't collapse when we pour the main body of the, of the mold. And this plastic stand is a hollow shell, and if the rubber could leak underneath it, you wind up filling up this whole hollow stand with rubber, and that would just be a, you know, a catastrophic waste of, of rubber, which we do not want to do, not at the price of this stuff. I'm going to tip it up all the way like this and that way it'll help it to fall into that area because it's wanting to catch bubbles in there which I do not want to allow it to do. Uh, this is where my video making skills failed me. I put a bead of rubber, a seal of rubber around the entire base. You remember to turn the camera on. It's uh, very helpful and just like I did on the base I'm going around on the bottom of the mold case. I'm uh, just putting a bead of rubber, a layer of rubber on the bottom, like making a gasket. The whole, whole purpose to all this preliminary work with the rubber is to stop leaks. And uh, you know, this is not a space shuttle here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty low level woodworking. So there's always a possibility that there's gonna be little gaps and cracks. Yeah, this rubber is gonna make it nice and tight. It works really well. I came to the studio this morning only to discover this debacle. So this bucket leaked. I don't know why, but despite the fact that I've never seen a rubber bucket do anything like this before, I'm prepared for it. So what we'll do, we'll take some craft paper first of all, and let's just move the bottles, which are, have gunk on the bottoms, onto the craft paper. All right, so I got a mess here now. And the reason I'm prepared for it is that I collect sawdust out of the table saw. And you just liberally apply it to the spill. Okay, it looks like I got it all. Now, I'm gonna let the sawdust do its job and suck up all that resin. And then I'll just be able to kind of broom it up. I'm gonna rub it in to make sure that it's absorbed it all, and then I'll just broom it up. These things happen, you know, you just, you have these little disasters that befall you and you just got to be prepared for them and uh, clean them up when they happen. I took these four clamps and I put them on, they can come off now, uh, because this rubber is set up and this frame is absolutely glued down to the base. I mean, it is on there good. It's not going anywhere and it's not going to leak. These tabs are really just kind of an insurance policy. They're not doing that much. The rubber is doing all the work of holding the frame onto the base. All right, let's mix up some rubber here. I'm just dispensing it out and, and we'll get it all mixed up very neatly, but you can see it's full of bubbles. So let's pop it into the vacuum chamber, get the lid on, <laughs> get that thing in there good and uh, crank up the vacuum. Away it goes. There it goes. Love to see all those bubbles leave. Very good. Ready to go. And now we can start pouring this mold. I'm going to pour exclusively down into the corners because I want it to fill from the corners outwards. I want it to just flow around the base. 
I'm gonna take our time. We're gonna let the rubber flow around, go from the bottom. It's really hard to see what's going on down in there, but the rubber is just gonna flow down like that. See how it's just flowing down that channel? That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna fill in the sides first. We won't even worry about the top till we get the sides all filled. Just letting the rubber push the air out in front of it like a wave. It's always how you wanna do it. So now we have the edges poured. We can start to think about mounting these in place. That one goes here, this one goes here. We'll get those mounted up and we can pour the center. I worry about stuff. And what I worry about here are these, just this corners, these corners. I just feel like these are bubble traps. All right, let's see how this is gonna work. Just wanna make a fillet of rubber. Kind of fill that in ahead of time. Still not satisfied with these. I, I, don't, I don't like where the rubber could possibly get trapped. So let's do another thing. And anyway, it gives me an opportunity to talk about one more little thing to do. Here's mini fibers. And uh, all mini fibers are is uh, a, a very, very fine plastic powder. What I wanna do is I wanna make a thick paste that doesn't sag. See, that's pretty stiff. See how stiff that is? That's not going anywhere. That's what we want. I'm just filling in that joint between those two pieces of wood where I feel like could really catch bubbles. Bubble, bubbles can make weak points in the mold. They can just come back to haunt you. And I think that that's going to be much less likely to catch bubbles. And even if it did, they really, really would be buried. Okay, so that's that one. That's good enough for me. So that is the kind of thing that mini fiber is really great for. Just building up areas of molds where you don't want there to be any sag at all. The deepest parts of the mold, the parts that have the deepest pockets are the trickiest part. Uh, so I'm gonna try two different ways of filling them. We'll see which one works out best. The way I'm gonna do it here is I'm going to fill it from one side, just down into the well, and hopefully it will run through and perfectly fill it from one side. That's the plan anyway. Let's see if it works. Let's just pour it on in. Theoretically, the rubber will just run from this side of the thing to the other and fill it up in a wave in front of it. And that should work. I like everything around here, it's an experiment. Looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do. Yep, it is coming to the other side and it should be pushing out just perfectly. Like I said, we're gonna do this one this way. And we're gonna take a look at the other one and do it a different way. Lots of experimenting, lots of trial and error, and you just see how it goes. <laughs> it looks really good. I hope it came out well. We'll know soon enough. To do this pocket on this side, uh, I'm gonna just do a direct pour. This should be a lot faster, uh, but it does have, comes fraught with a little bit more chance of catching bubbles, not down here in the pocket. That's gonna be just fine. No worries. In fact, it, here I know this pocket is gonna make a clean cast, but whereas in the other one, I, I poured it blind. So there was some chance that I didn't get a clean one, but I think we did, but I don't know. Okay, so now this pocket is now full, so that was a heck of a lot faster. But I also want to pour underneath this middle part and fill in here, fill this cavity in this middle part. This surface on the underside is curved, and that should make a big difference because being a curved surface should mean that the rubber, the, the air should push out perfectly. This is nutty, it's a nutty thing to do. <laughs> Let's push this in, and that should force the rubber out of that pocket at least a little bit, and it did. Let's secure that part with some screws. Okay, those are in place. I think we're looking pretty good. One more pour, this could be our last pour. Not sure, we'll see how it goes. So let's dump it in 
and get this mold filled up. I don't know, is this gonna be the last pour for this mold? Maybe, could be. One thing I was definitely thinking about was that I want this mold box to be filled up to the top, and it's not. It's, it's below the top, about, I don't know, quarter of an inch, good fat quarter of an inch. So rather than uh, waste more fresh rubber, let's encapsulate chunkies and push them in and see if that doesn't bring this thing a little bit more up to the top. I think if we encapsulate enough chunks, rubber chunks, then uh, we may not have to put any more rubber in. Who knows? We'll see. By shoving them in like this, I'm not trapping air underneath them and the rubber can flow around them so they get fully encapsulated. I've tried all kinds of different ways of adding old rubbers. I used to grind the mold up, the rubber up. This chunk method is the most, I have found so far, the most reliable method. I haven't yet to find a better method. If you have a better method, I'd love to hear about it. It's been 24 hours. All this was yesterday and uh, we're ready to take it all apart. All right, all screws are out. Now for the fun part, let's see if we can take this thing apart. <laughs> all right, so now the question is, is, can we get these pieces to pry apart? Oh yeah, slowly, slowly, slowly. You're just gonna break the suction. You don't wanna break the mold. Slowly. Slowly, see how it's coming? It's coming, slow and easy. Start from the other side. Oh, that, oh yeah, there we go. There we go, let's pull this off of there. Let's see if this will come off. Oh yeah. There you go. There it is, boy, those, all right. Boy, that came out all right. That came out all right. That's looking good, so far so good. So far I'm not crying. You'll know uh, if it fails, as you get to watch a grown man cry. Lots of crying if I fail, all right. Okay, that came off, nice. Now these end caps shouldn't be too hard to pull off, I'm hoping. Let's see, what am I gonna have to do to get these off? Just pull them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Well, I am have hopes that we have a decent mold. Let's find out. Oh, look at that. All right, kids, let's see what we got. Pull the dams out. Dams did not leak at all. Very good, good. Little bit, tiny bit of leakage over here, but not a big deal. Easy to trim. I went around and I kind of trimmed off some flash and some this and that. And now it's time to take this mold apart. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this paper out because the paper causes problems when you take a mold apart. So we're gonna do the same thing we did taking off the case. We're just gonna go slow and easy and see if we can't. I think this end is okay. Let's see if we can go slow and easy. Just, just ease, just kind of a slow, gentle tug. You just wanna to try to work air down under there if you can. I can hear it. There it goes. It's wanting to come up. I got air. There you go. There you go. Just, there it goes. 
Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is looking good. We've got this piece of this flap of flash that leaked under, but that's not going to hurt a thing. Very, very nice. Okay, no bubbles at all. Very clean. And I think we have a mighty purdy mold. That's just looking great. I got to tell you, I had some concerns about it. Um, one of the big concerns was if the mold case didn't go back together. I screwed it back. You saw me take it apart. I screwed it back together the same way, just reassembled it. It reassembled perfectly, but if it hadn't, if it had been a little warped or not gone together right, it could have warped the mold or caused the rubber blanket to wrinkle. You know, some of these wall thickness is pretty thin. It's probably a fat quarter of an inch, maybe a third of an inch wall thickness. So it's not a super big brick. You know, one of the, the easy way to have made this mold, and, and <laughs> you see this all over YouTube, you just make a box around your part and you just pour a big giant slab of rubber. And uh, I see this all the time in these mold channels on YouTube where they just pour these big blocks of silicone rubber. And that's great if you want to suck up 10 or 15 pounds of rubber at 11 bucks a pound or whatever it is now. It's expensive. So the, the point of this video was that you can build mold cases. You can build shells or mothers or whatever you want to call them uh, that fit your part. And that uh, allows you to be, you know, it's not as time economical, but it certainly is material economical. This is a viewer project number two, and I'm sure that uh, Jacob would much rather pay for this amount of rubber than one of those big, giant, <laughs> really heavy blocks of rubber. Hey, if you liked the video and you got something out of it, hit that like button. It really helps me uh, amazingly, astoundingly, uh, as of today. Um, I'm at 993 subscribers, so I'm seven away from 1,000. I think by the time you're watching this movie, I'll be over 1,000. And that, you know, it, I'm blown away. I'm sh shocked and blown away and uh, extremely grateful to all of you for being here and for watching and for participating. Don't forget, uh, send me your questions, send me your suggestions, send me your projects. I love hearing from you. Next week, we're going we're gonna to cast this, we're going to cast this project and we're going to do it by hand laying fiberglass with epoxy resin. So be sure to come back and check that out. I appreciate your being here very much. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.